And now, from the Marquee Media Studio inside Mark Tank, it's the Mark Haney Show. Now it is my pleasure to bring on my friend Fareed Ismail Zada. He is an entrepreneur, he is an investor, he is the founder and president of Technovate Investments, LLC. And you're a venture studio, which I want to help our audience to get to know you for sure, but also kind of like the difference between a, a venture studio and an accelerator or maybe just a venture capital firm. So anyway, welcome to the show. Let's find out a little bit about you and your background to start off with. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, I always watch your shows like I'm subscribed to it and also get the newsletter always from Gross Factory. So I click on sometimes uh, certain topics that are very interesting for me and I definitely sit down and watch them until the end so always thought about being here also to be honest so myself like i'm originally born in, in a country called azerbaijan it's uh, all the way east of europe right at the border between europe and asia uh it's a small country 10 million uh, it's known for its oil and gas mostly uh but innovation is picking up so um but i'm if, uh, I'm also an American University graduate, so I studied in San Jose State University and worked one year in New York. Uh, then basically that was 2003 to 2006, I was here. Um, then I went back to Azerbaijan uh, and launched a company called Golden Pay, which is very similar to American PayPal, Stripe, like online payments company. Um, then also owned a, a platform which was a mix of eBay, Amazon, Expedia, all of it in one in a way. Like, so you would get a lot of services, pay your bills, uh, get your flights or movie theater tickets or insurance all in one. Unlike in US where you have it, everything separate. We put them all Mm -hmm. together. It's a small country, so it was working that way better. So um, yeah, in 2019, uh, and I also owned a loyalty company. So in 2019, I exited from them. Like took me approximately a year from the negotiations till uh, basically final exit. Um, so, and then I launched a venture studio, uh, which I believe you, you're very interested to know more. Uh, it's basically, um, so from that exit money, um, I still wanted to be part of startup s- stuff because I love innovation, I love technology, and I wanted to always had passion to be part of all this stuff. And um, so there's many models of how you can be involved with stuff. One is like, you can be an angel investor, right? Like there's certain amounts that you're comfortable with in terms of tickets, you write those checks. There are VC firms, if you're right, you might give that money to some VC firms and they will write those checks for you. Then there are incubators and accelerators where uh, you work with startups and help them out and so on. And sometimes you write checks, sometimes you don't. So. Um, but a lot in these models depends on the founders. So all you do is just support, like you expect the founder uh, take the company from A to Z. Uh, in venture studio model though, uh, you somehow, some sort of a become a co-founder. Mm. So you get involved, hands, hands on. And uh, usually in countries when I, I'm the region where I come from, the technical uh, education is very strong comes back from old Soviet times and usually at that Soviet times where also technical education was very high. That's why you have a lot of programmers from Ukraine, you have Belarusians and so on, still even American firms are outsourcing those services to, to that kind of countries. But the missing part is entrepreneurial mindset, the marketing, the mm-hmm. sales, how to put the legal infrastructure correctly, how to put finance correctly. Yeah, so you got you have great technical people they can invent stuff they've got imagination um but all the business acumen doesn't exist so the venture studio model brings all the missing pieces together and you help you actually help build the company alongside potentially the the you know the scientist or the inventor Mm -hmm. and you basically help them in areas where they really aren't there at the very beginning. Exactly, like right at the ideation stage. So just come with the idea. So so as a studio, what we do, we start working with them. Um, Like in the beginning, it was just myself, then you start to have some teammates and then some services you outsource. For example, uh, because 
the way our Winter Studio works, where we turn them into American companies, mm. like we register them actually in Delaware, and then we go to market in the United States. Okay, so you take the foreign uh, ideas and then you uh, mm. you turn it into an American business. Exactly. Okay, gotcha. Correct. So yeah, so because the market's bigger and there's much more opportunity to get, to get venture capital and so on. Everything, like yeah. literally everything. So that's why we are handpicking only the ideas that believe that can go global at least American market if not global and usually to be honest when you actually basically get American market you get global market mm -hmm. I mean it's like if you're Apple iPhone then you suddenly the whole world is using you or if you're Android phone like so that's right. like that's basically target so we look for really this specific idea so like if somebody comes with a local idea let's say I don't know I want to build the next payment company locally I'm sorry, I'm not interested. Right. I want something that I can take to America and then take it worldwide. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And the, the ecosystem in the United States is amazing for that because, as you said, we can get into uh, investor uh, infrastructure, uh, possibly selling, you, you know, some of our products that we're, we're talking to electric vehicle companies. And so those don't right. exist in my part of the world. So if you want to deal with them, you need to be here, right? Or, um, or like uh, legal aspects. I mean, like the IP protection, the the way legal. Okay. Yeah, sometimes it's too much in US. Like, but I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but yes. it, it is it is. But you can come much. here and get things copyrighted or trademarked exactly. or whatever, or patented. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And then you get respected for it. Mm -hmm. Like NDAs are respected. Like, mm -hmm. so things like that. So that part of the world is a little bit these things just starting so um so you have to be in states if you're trying to build something global so that's yeah. what we do and so you know you think about that you're you're getting more products products ideas that would be just dying in your country now have the opportunity to change the world and really improve our world that's what entrepreneurs do is they improve the world and so it's it's a cry and shame when people have these great ideas and they get invented and then you know they just die off because sure. nobody's gonna take them to market nobody even knows about them so um, it's great that you do that and I would I would also say that this has the potential to really be good for Sacramento because for some reason you decide to locate here in Sacramento so you've got these ideas that you're sourcing from around the world bringing them to Sacramento and create an entrepreneurial opportunity here Correct. Great for us too. <laughs> definitely, definitely. And I'm as not may, probably not as much as you are, but I'm very passionate about Sacramento. Also, uh, we discussed this like several times with you in private conversations we always had. Um, so, I just wanted to add on to your previous statement: the education due to internet has become global. So, like now. You don't really have to of course there's a lot of advantage of being graduate of stanford's and harvard's mit's but you can have smart people that in unknown places in unknown countries in unknown villages or cities that these guys are self-educated by watching youtubes and uh, podcasts like mm -hmm. yours and so on like this is all part of education right so as a result you might have inventors that from a known country from a known village can actually can have some invention that actually can turn the world upside down in a good way uh, so that's what we're trying to look and these are uh, the region that we work we operate is azerbaijan georgia central asia those are countries that are usually not so attractive or not something that everybody's looking at but again, as I told you, talent is talent and can be there. So then, okay, when we talk about the talent has already built a prototype, this is the time to come to U.S. The landing point is very important and the U.S. is a big country and you guys have hubs like you have New York's and you have Boston's, you have Texas's and you have Los Angeles, Silicon Valley's and Sacramento, our dear mm -hmm. Sacramento. So you're like choosing like where to be, why to be, right? Kind of thing. And uh, and there's some sort of a, in a good way competition between these things and everybody has something to offer and something not to offer. We picked up Sacramento pure accidentally. Uh, you know Ingrid Rosen, who used to be my mentor and I worked for her when I was studying still in San Jose State. I'm talking about almost 20 something years old ago. So, 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 um, so she moved here for her personal reasons and she was living here. And when I told her about Technovate's story that, oh, I have one, two startups now, I'm ready to come to US back in 2019. Uh, and I was going to go to Bay Area. I went to San Jose State. I know that yeah, place, yeah. You want to go to Silicon Valley, right? Yeah, you want to go to Silicon Valley. But she was like, "Freed, like, look, I mean, 
uh, cost of life is very high there. Like, why would you want to rent a place and pay like 10K when you can pay 3K for here, right? Or like, uh, and it's not that far if you need to go there to meet one. I mean, for that 7,000 difference, mm -hmm. you can go to San, San Jose and Sacramento like 7,000 times if you want to. <laughs> you know, it's like nearby. The costs are like, and then this ecosystem that's coming up, you will quickly meet everybody in the like ecosystem players and that was the reality like in a month or two after i arrived i already started to know you everybody in sacramento angels i started to know monet adventures and all the other guys that we have here so it was like quick and uh, uh, and like uh, and then you get support like this or that way you get start getting support and then if you have projects that you have to do something with sacramento kings it's there you mm -hmm. want to do something with sacramento republic i mean our soccer team which you know i'm a big fan of soccer so yes yeah so it is it is there like whatever you want to do you, yeah that did you have trouble changing over from calling it football? Did you call it football before, and then you had yes. to convert? You have to call it soccer. Yes. Do you sometimes call it football? Uh, so now that my problem is now when I'm back in Europe, I say soccer, and they get angry. <laughs> yeah, they are. They're like, dude, <laughs> it's football. What happened to you? Oh, you're too Americanized. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> you're made fun of because you're becoming American. Yeah, exactly. That's what exactly. It is. So, so basically, yeah, the the location is amazing. Um, it has everything and not only for myself i became like a promoter of the location abroad as well like they i mean a couple of governments together wanted to open a startup house in bay area and i started to kind of go against it and was like dude we should open it in sacramento like trust me like i can probably talk to you know create a sacramento economic council and all the other guys like we can get some supports and some things let's not do there it's a couple of hours away whenever you need to go to bay area nice. go there but it will be cheaper better i mean like you will get much more resources here so that's that's how i feel about it that's great well i love that obviously i grew up here i've only called it soccer and uh <laughs> you know and i but in football to me is that like those things you see on the shelf over there you go we, we bump into each other but you know we still have a lot in common we we love the startup community we love uh, you know seeing the world change in a positive way um now in terms of bringing these ideas here maybe just give us an idea of a couple of your uh, a couple of your inventions that you're bringing here and then what do you have to do when you get it here because they're coming with potentially uh, a great idea but you need sales and marketing you need, you need finance you need all these different i guess leadership uh components in order to take a company and you know make it great yeah Correct. Uh, first of all, you need to have an understanding that not, not everything will work out. And it's our, our startup life is such that we are immune to failures. I mean, like, it's part mm -hmm. of our job. Okay. I mean, like, if we're dealing with 10 projects, well, I mean, like, if only my, one or two might make it. And uh, and this is applicable even in what we're trying to do. So, um, so what happens is that yeah, you can have... Uh, uh, a project abroad like uh, an invention or not necessarily much maybe brought a couple of uh, materials together and built something new something something better and can be even softer we have something in software uh, in our portfolio as well some uh, some like innovative idea whatever so uh, so yeah the, the next step is usually the prototype step uh, because when these guys approach to us back at their home place, uh, they approach with just idea or maybe like very simple prototype where uh, I personally invest around $50,000 up to $50,000 uh, to make it a proper prototype. And uh, and usually um, that $50,000 is not like given to the guy and like, okay, come back in six months. No, it's like given like in pieces. Okay, you, as that's you a need part, it. As you need, it's part of Venture Studio model. So you control the situation. Because at Venture Studio, you can see that like, things are failing and you can cut it off immediately so you don't do too much loss. Ah. Uh, or if the guy is not delivering, lying or whatever, mm -hmm. so, like, you can identify it at, at the beginning rather than like after all 50,000 is gone. So like, I don't know, he comes like, I need a 3D printer. Okay, let me buy it for you. I don't know. I okay. need like two team members. Okay, let me pay salaries so it can help you. Things like that. So step by step. The product after prototype, the next stage is... Uh, uh, so according to agreement we had with the founder, we do a uh, registration of the company in Delaware. And if the thing is patentable, then we start, uh, like our lawyers are green victoric, we start with them like, you know, patenting process, company registration process and so on. Then we help the guys with visa because now usually they get O1, O2 visa, which is uh, immigrant visa for uh, United States. So we bring them here. Uh, again, we had like, for example, one of the, 
projects that are going very well at the moment is the project of a material that doesn't burn. It was invented in Georgia. It's basically off the shelf for materials sandwiched in a such way that, and the know how is that, what are those materials? How they it's are. It's from the uh, country of Georgia? Yeah, country okay. of Georgia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I have. Yeah. Yeah. So, we yeah, have a state. State of Georgia. <laughs> I know, I know. I, I heard that when. Russia attacked Georgia back in like uh, back in the days. There were people thinking that <laughs> Russia attacked the state of Georgia. Like, uh, and poor Saakashvili, like who was the president of uh, Georgia at that time, was trying to <laughs> convince that that's not the case. So, um, so basically, so that Georgian guys invented this material that doesn't burn. So uh, it handles like 3,600 direct flame Fahrenheit of direct flame. And now we're trying to wrap electric vehicle batteries with that, so that okay. when they catch fire, nothing happens to the property, the car, and the, and of course the the driver or the passengers. So that's this example of like just one of the projects. We have a project about sit up straight, like posture, oh, yes. so it vibrates when you are not sitting up right. We have something to do with toys. And that'll be like a direct to consumer type of exactly. Uh, we yeah. have a di okay. direct to consumer. We have something to do with influencers and like. Uh, uh, celebrities personal growth thing that uh, after certain um, certain uh, tests uh, I'm dreaming about launching it together with Sacramento Kings and so on like mm -hmm. make some joint project that's the beauty again of being from the region and uh, I haven't directly talked to them but indirectly I'm getting the feeling of like they're open to support local uh, and and as you mentioned, like when the startups already moved, we actually become local. Now we're yeah. like Sacramento and startup, uh, and and we're starting to pay taxes. We're renting a place here. We're you know we're buying groceries. We're you know all that is mm -hmm. we're contributing to the local economy. So we're part of it. We're raising funds sometimes even if not from Sacramento, from somewhere else. But we're pulling the cash here and we're starting yeah. to to spend here. So all that good things. So yeah, that's that's what that's what's happening. Yeah, what's the uh, longer term vision for the organization? Uh, longer term vision is that uh, at the moment, like uh, I'm very focused with the startups we have in portfolio, uh, trying to bring them t towards a good exit. Like, um, of course, you're targeting all of them, but in the back of your mind, you understand that like to have five out of five, four out of four, it's like, a, oh, it's like a, in startup world, we'll say God level, you know, like mm -hmm. you're making, oh sure, all startups make it. I, I, I mean, it will be tough, but that's the target. After that, to be honest, uh, my goal is uh, like after a good exit, my goal is to, to be part of a VC fund or as an LP or whatever, or um, create one, most likely will be LP or GP in one of those. And, we have Monet Ventures here, which is pretty prominent, like mm -hmm. something like that, or with them, or with you guys, like with somebody yeah. when when I will have a quite enough available cash for this kind of activities. Then yes, uh, so then yeah, continue changing the world, continue looking for foreign startups, not only in that three countries, three, four countries, maybe globally now, and promoting Sacramento, bringing them here, and let's see. What's the biggest obstacle standing in your way right now? We're currently, I mean, like we're experiencing at the moment normal um, fundraising issues that is right now happening all over the place. Like that is like this. I don't think people don't have money. It's more of like they are hesitant at the moment, like and mm -hmm. psychologically stopped to see what's going on, like with economy, with, I don't know, elections coming up, this, that, like they're like at the moment they're like, so those are the things that we're experiencing. But I mean, it's just not making it impossible, just making it longer. Like for example, yeah. Uh, we are about to close our round for the the Elven Technologies, the material project. Uh, it took us like almost a year. Like, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, when COVID times, when the, I mean, literally investors were giving it was frothy thing. there for a while. Yeah, yeah it was it's like, like, yeah, uh, that sounds cool. Let's do it. Uh, exactly. Yeah. I, I was imagining that we could have raised in three months probably for a project yeah. like that. So, but now it's like everybody's a little bit. Yeah, it's so, uh, it's definitely different. It's normal. It's probably normalizing. It might have been even too frothy. So now it's normalizing. Correct. So people are just being a little bit more cautious. Um, you know, from a growth factory standpoint, we always invest in the founder, not in the founder, excuse me, in the uh, in the team. And so the CEO, it's typically the founder, but the who the CEO is and who that founding team is, um, is super important. So in, in a case like uh, your fire company or your, your flame company, 
Do you, have you identified the CEO and the founding team, the sales team, and those kind of things yet? So here's how it. Or actually, that's a, another like a difference of venture studio model is that um, is that venture studio tries to the teammates like team team in the venture studio tries to be in, takes interim roles in those startups like whatever is missing. For example, in this Elven that the fire fire material. The guys are very technical. So CTO is done. Like we have okay. a person who is CTO like, and he would know that thing better than anybody. Look, and he has a team that knows the things. So what is missing? Like I'm playing some sort of interim CEO role there. Okay. But um, because I mean, I'm helping with business development, helping with fundraising and so on. Like I'm mostly the one. But uh, what will happen usually is that uh, it is okay in venture studio to bring a f- uh, external person after startup is grown to certain age. And the CTO understands that. Yeah, I mean, the founder understands that he doesn't have a capability to do it. And I personally also know that, for example, when we'll come to the point that we have to negotiate with Teslas and I don't know, Lucids and Rivians, and like directly talk to the CEOs, like uh, neither my experience nor my knowledge is enough to st- stand up in front of them. I'll be right. honest. And, and it's good to know what you're good at and you're not good at. So that's the time means that I have to step down and we have to pay somebody else with equity or cash mm-hmm. or together even to mm-hmm. come and step up and take it to the next level. So that's part yeah. of studio. So basically you, you're a venture builder there. Okay. So you build a venture. So, so guess, right, typically you're bringing in the CEO at the time you're taking it to market. Exactly. Yeah, or maybe exactly. just before. Exactly. Yeah. So for example, on the spinal, the project with uh, posture, there is already a CEO, oh, so okay. I'm out. So so now he, it is a point that they're, they're, they're about to close $1 million and they're about to be mass produced and mass sold. Wow. So I'm out now. So like, and I become some sort of advisor there, like, you know. Right. So that's how it works. Like, and then when my plate gets emptier, it means that I can take additional startups to, to the... And the venture studio model is kind of interesting too because because you're hel- you're helping so early and you're giving so much help. There's a, I mean, that's a big lift. Um, you take a bigger piece of equity Correct. than Correct. maybe you know a little later stage, Correct. and you get a, a smaller. You know, the later you invest, the the littler equity you exactly. get. So you exactly. take a pretty. How, yeah. What kind of percentage on average we you are, take? We, twenty starts with twenty, and sometimes we have thirty six even. Twenty have, to thirty six. Yeah, like yeah. almost like twenty to forty. As twenty you, to as, forty. Okay. Yeah, as yeah. you mentioned, yeah, it's a big big jump because you start like as I told, we consider ourselves like a co-founders yeah. because it was venture builders. We consider yeah, like your time and your team's your time, time energy, is uh, like, very valuable. So it's not about this fifty k I'm giving in yeah. the beginning. That's even the, usually the money at ventures to do is the least important. Like mm-hmm. in that kind of situation, it's mostly like the experience and the knowledge, energy, network that okay. we bring in. Okay, gotcha. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what did I not ask you? What else, what else you want to make sure we cover today? Well, I think we talked about like our both passions about Sacramento. That was my uh, my how to say Im- important thing. Uh, I think uh, what we need to do. I would like like the the audience if they will be audience from the leaders of Sacramento understand that it is it is e- I mean it is possible to compete with other hubs and uh, by creating more opportunities here we can actually do a much better job. Uh, I love the fact that, for example, we have an airport, which is very important, like uh, coming and going is not that difficult, uh, to be honest. Of course, it's not San Francisco level where you have direct flights from all over Europe, but here uh, it is important. Um, I think we need to bring a bit more cash in the region. Like I I would love to kind of have more investors here, like more people who Mm -hmm. would like to chip into to invest investments to startup growth and stuff so that would be like kind of my messages and things that i would like to see and yeah it is possible to bring a lot more foreign startups a lot more foreign innovation to the region and go global from here like go go from here it's amazing location i love it um uh, lifestyle is good if, if you have family it's even better i'll be honest with you like for example i would never have my family in San Francisco with all those homelessness going on, with all those, uh, unfortunately, like a uh, crime going on. Like uh, the other day, uh, my brother was driving my car. He parked and he came like all six cars around him was all window was broken. Oh, and my Things goodness. were taken away. In yeah. San Francisco? In San Francisco. Oh, so wow. like things like that. I mean, you you can leave your car like open <laughs> here, yeah. like even windows down if you want to. So things like that, which are very important when you think about foreign um startups moving here families yeah. and stuff moving here schools are important and colleges and all that kind of stuff. Oh, i forgot by, by the way we mentioned college so we have uc davis and sac state which is very important because when you grow your company you start hiring 
and uh, you can hire from there. It's very important. We had UC Davis hirings and so on, so mm-hmm. it was, it is very important. So basically, it's a great, great place. A bit more push, I think that can be, uh, that can be some sort of niche of Sacramento, like just dealing with foreign startups, foreign, foreign businesses coming here and becoming local and going, gro- going big from here. Yeah, I mean, I admire the work you guys are doing and all the other ecosystem players are doing. Um, and yeah, happy to be here, happy uh, to do what Technovate is niche doing. And hopefully we all succeed. And, you know, we, I think, need a couple of unicorns or something here and then the rest will come. Yeah, couple, so. Oh, we need a couple of unicorns. Fareed, I want to uh, help. I want to thank you for coming on the show and uh, appreciate what you do. And you're, you're an asset to our community and you come with a a different perspective which is needed and i think that's one of the things about sacramento we're, we're pretty open-minded to um you know to figure out ways to win and uh you know ideas from the outside coming here and growing here is uh, is really special so thank you very much thank you thank you and i'm happy to be as you always like to call like in your backyard in a yeah, way like uh, and and, uh, and do whatever you do and support you in every activity you do. Thank, thank you so much for invitation as well you bet Thanks for watching today's show. My goal for every episode is that you find a takeaway, something tangible you can use in your business today. And if you have a comment about a favorite takeaway, feel free to put it in the, in the box below. And if you have a, a topic that you'd like me to bring up on the show, don't forget to let me know. And also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you want to learn more about entrepreneurship. Because at Haney Biz, we are always by your side.